Hello everyone, my name is Sick, and welcome to a new series on a game called Endless Space 2. Now this game has been out for a little while, but I never played it. It had a free weekend on Steam, just this weekend, and I figured I'd try it out, you know? And I've quite liked what I've been playing so far, so I actually ended up buying it, and... Well, strategy games make for a good YouTube series, I think, so... I'm just going to go ahead and start a new playthrough. Right, so we can start a new game. And there are various factions that we can play as. Um, they're all quite interesting and very different. The one we have selected right now is called Horatio. And that sounds like a single guy's name, and that's actually because it is. <laughs> Horatio is a billionaire of some sorts who perfected cloning, and he thinks he's... He thinks he is so brilliant and perfect that he basically ended up cloning himself over and over and over again and now kind of wants to populate the entire universe with clones of himself. And so he gets um, some interesting benefits. One of them is Gene Hunter, which is a faction affinity. It is um, plus 5% food production or consumption per spiced population on original empire population and basically Horatio can spice the DNA or the, gen the genetic material of other factions to enhance its own population. So all the Horatio in your um, in your empire can get a benefit of you know whatever benefits the uh, minor factions in your empire have, but they're going to eat more food to uh, maintain that um, plus side basically. And then we have Horatio. The Horatio are Horatio, and intend to expand until all the galaxy is as gorgeous as they are. <laughs> and effects are plus 3 food and plus 2 happiness on hot planets. Right, and there are multiple people that we can play as, and they're all, like I said, very different. You have the Sophons, who are a uh, science-rated faction. The Cravers, who are a um, very militant faction. The Lumeris, who are a very economy driven faction the Fojani who are kind of like um, um, I'm looking for the word but they don't quite settle planets and things like that I think they they keep on the move basically you have the United Empire which are basic humans you have Horatio of course you have the Riftborn who hail from an alternative dimension are and look quite different as you can see right here by the portrait <laughs> you also have the Unfallen uh, I'm not entirely sure what they are but they are some kind of alien race as well. Let's see. Can use their ships to expand their tendrils to adjacent systems. When a system is anchored, this way they can colonize it or let it provide bonuses, approval and population growth to friends. Interesting. And then you have the Unfallen. An ancient race who have lived simple, harmonious lives for millennia. The Unfallen seek peace with the other races of the galaxy. Ah, right. So they are very pacifistic. Um... For this playthrough, I'm leaning towards Horatio because that kind of seems interesting with the splicing of genetics. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and play uh, as him, basically. Apparently we will be going up against Cravers, Vajani, Lumeris, Sophons and the Unfallen. Now we also have various galaxy shapes that we can play as. We have an Ovoid. An old galaxy whose arms have disappeared, forming a stretched elliptical galaxy. This is like a flattened disk, right? So you have a ring disk with a uh, with four sectors, spirals, twin ellipticals, and random. So let's um, let's go for a random galaxy. Few number of constellations. Galaxy size will be large, and galaxy density will be medium. And there will be six competitors. Game difficulty will be normal because I am still quite new. I haven't figured out everything. But um, hopefully the AI is going to present a challenge nonetheless. Anyway, I think we've done about all that we can do here. Except, let's see, click to use the hero skins from the Digital Deluxe Edition. Well, I paid for it. Let's go use it. <laughs> let's begin. They only ever saw what was in the mirror. I always saw 
what was beyond. They saw deformity. I found beauty. They saw madness. I found genius. For the longest time, I have been the only one who sees what lies beyond the mirror. But soon, very soon, they will see it as well. There you have the many Horatio. The brink, no man has traveled further, struggled more, and unraveled more of the mysteries of the universe than Horatio. At least, according to Horatio. Now with a great nation cast in his image, Horatio is ready to extend his vision to beautify the rest of the galaxy. Look in the mirror. Horatio, and you will always find the answers you seek. All right. Well then, let's see. We also have a bit of a tutorial still going on, and that is quite useful because every faction plays a little bit differently. So let's see. The Horatio tends not to dabble in the affairs of others, preferring to keep advancing their cloning and gene splicing technologies. One use for exotic peoples and creatures would be, indeed, to take their best features and integrate them into Horatio's DNA, so that all Horatio may benefit from what this galaxy has to offer. To learn more on these topics, click on the Senate button or click on the Manage Population button. Alright, let's have a look then. Manage Population. Before your eyes is the best way to learn about your people, the Horatio and their lesser species. <laughs> Know their political leanings and learn what type of bonus they bring to your empire. You may learn what they could add to Horatio through the gene splicing effect screen, should you desire their advantages. Be careful though, gene extraction will require more and more individuals from a species to sacrifice their life with each subsequent splicing process. Alright then, <laughs> that's quite brutal isn't it? Ensuring a successful graft of foreign genes means collecting all available samples of a species. Put bluntly, it means cutting up everyone from a specific population. Worry not though, as your beautiful empire will be stronger for it. For each population assimilated, your hunger grows more ravenous, so make sure enough food is available. Once the decision is made to extract the population's genes, use the button Splice Genes to start the progress. Perfection awaits. Alright, so we have a lesser species called the Zavali. Let's have a look what they bring to the table. Um, curious and technically savvy, the Savali are a self-reliant species who trust in the power of science. And they get a plus three science bonus when they are happy and a plus two happiness bonus altogether. That is interesting. We cannot spice their genes, however, because we need more people. We need at least two population units to perform this action. So currently we are one Savali and two Horatio. They are, of, of course, uh, they have political output as scientists, while Horatio, let's see, has ecology. All right, interesting. Let's close the screen. And, um, well, we have our little galaxy here called Shaddai. Let's zoom in a little bit. We have four planets in here and three of them are colonizable already. And this is something that is very different from the regular um, races as well and i think we have to look at the empire screen and the laws we have enacted so let's have a look systems no that's not it sorry the senate screen <laughs> right so we have four representatives all who are all ecologists so this is the only political party right now uh, political power can be wielded in many ways the senate screen is where you can channel this power and implement long-term strategies Firstly, the Senate breakdown reveals the representatives in your Senate, and every 20 turns an election will be held and the makeup of your Senate may change. 
The presence and strength of the leading political parties in your government determine the available laws. Right. Note that the hero whose, political match whose politics matches one of the leading political parties automatically becomes leader of the party. This can bring additional bonuses which originate from the hero's inherent abilities or skill tree and remain whether the hero is assigned elsewhere or not. Ah, that is interesting. I did not know that. And then we have the population census. You can see the current breakdown of your whole empire's population. Each population type naturally supports a single political party, but will also politically react to events in their own unique way. In this way, an observant leader can anticipate the political trends that will impact forthcoming elections. Yeah. Alright, so one of our active laws is Hardship Ready. And its effect is that it enables colonization of Telluric, which means non-gas, apparently, planets. However, you will suffer a minus 50 FIDS penalty without the correct colonization technology. Technology, sorry. Now, FIDS means food, um, science, production, something else like that. It's basically all the resources that you need for production of all kinds of things. Right, so this is food, we have production, we have uh, dust, and science. Industry, so that's it. So, you know, food, industry, dust, and science. Fits, basically. Right, so right now we could colonize all of these planets, which other col colonies or other races would not be able to do. However, we are going to have to suffer a minus 50 um, de decrease to our overall production on those planets. So this is not something that we might want to do straight away, right? All right, so we can start building things here, however, on Horatio Prime. And the first thing I always like to build is the drone network. At least this is something I'd like to start building since I started playing this weekend, because it, its effects are plus 10 food production and plus 10 industry production. And that is quite useful for growing and building straight away. And it only has an upkeep of two dust. Right now we have plus 25 dust, so that's going to work out quite nicely. Let's begin building that. In four turns, this will be done. And then we can do something else. All right. We also have a recruited hero. We already had a bit of a look at him. Farella EM8 Mario 22. Right. <laughs> right, so he's an overseer. And behind every great civilization lies great leaders. In your empire, the most important of these are your academy heroes, which are dust-enhanced individuals from across the galaxy who can change the course of history. Trained at the Fabled Academy, heroes come in four classes. Guardians, Seekers, Overseers and Counselors. Heroes can be assigned as system governors or fleet admirals to boost performance. Note though that assigned heroes incur a dust upkeep cost and must wait 10 turns when reassigned. To recruit new heroes in your empire you must discover the system where the Fabled Academy is located or build the Academy Embassy, a unique building unlockable by the Stage 2 Xenology Technology in the Empire Development Quadrant. Right. So he is an overseer, which focuses on system-wide resources and fleet development. The overseer ship is more oriented towards support and defense, ready to draw fire or provide defense bonuses. Well, actually, I think I prefer to assign this guy to a system for now. We only have one system, so let's uh, put him into Shaddai. Right. He will also gain experience from simply being a governor to these planets. Now we also have, let's see, luxury resources discovered. Ratsang. Alright. And we have super spuds. Right, so these are found in our system as well, apparently. I'm not entirely sure where. Doesn't really show on the planet right now, or at least we do have a strategic resource on Shaddai 3, which is titanium, which you need for upgrading um, other ships, basically. Also, we have some ships already. And I'm sorry this is a little bit slow, but with 4x games there is always a lot to explain. But we have two fleets here. We have the first Graceful Shoal and the first Iridescent Shoal. Now, the first one is a Beautifier, which is a colony ship. And the second one holds a revealer, which is an exploration ship. And we're going to send him off on these one of these two star lanes. But I think the top one will do just fine for now. 
and off he goes to find new planets. And I think I'm actually going to send him on the other one, because I haven't really noticed finding any enemies at the very start, so it seems pretty safe to do so. Alright, then we also need research. We have 19 signs per turn. Um, your empire may have found the secrets of voyaging between the stars, but without further scientific discoveries, your civilization will surely stagnate. Science production must be used to research new technologies to solve problems old and new. The technology tree is split into four quadrants. Empire development, science exploration, military and economy and trade. Each quadrant is split into stages. Access to higher stages is granted by researching a sufficient number of technologies from the previous stage of the corresponding quadrant. So basically we have quadrant 2, or stage 2, stage 3, stage 4. We can only get to stage 2 once we have upgraded one of these things, basically. And the same is true for all of these other places as well. Now I'm not entirely sure what might be most beneficial here, but I think some strategic resources are in order. Basically, all of these researches give you b different benefits and advantages. So, if you research xenobiology, you can then colonize tundra planets. Right? With plasma metallurgy, you can start mining Hyperium, which is a strategic resource. And you can build an interplanetary transport network. But I already saw that we had titanium inside of our first area. So, Xeno Linguistics will give us Xeno Industrial Infrastructure, which is plus 10 industry per fertile planets, per planet, and per temperate planet. So this could be quite useful, as well as giving us access to titanium. So that will be our first research right there. And now I think we've done about everything that we can do. Maybe. We could enact another law, but laws require upkeep of influence. Right now we are only getting plus seven influence per turn. I don't think we have what it takes to get another law started. So let's end this turn. All right, we're in the next turn. And these ships could move if we press this button. Basically click to order all fleets to execute their plant moves. I will do exactly that. All right, let's have a look. We have Kalem and Razam. And all of these plants can be colonized, which is indicated by this white dot over here. If this dot would have been empty on the inside, then it means you cannot colonize it. But of course we have a law that allows us to colonize pretty much everything. Well, let's have a look at Razam. Right, so we have several planets, and this is really cool. I quite like the presentation of this. First time you discover new planets, you get a nice overview like this. It tells you X X. <laughs> exactly what these planets produce and as you can see uh, none of these planets actually produce food they produce science and dust and a little bit of production so we could colonize this but the people would most likely starve so that is not something that <laughs> I think is encourageable but we have some curiosities and we can start searching for those once we click so we send out a drone from the spaceship on an expedition and it was successful we found a science from scrap battle tactic apparently earn science based on destroyed ships use it if you think you will destroy ships and want to receive science after the battle that is interesting i've never seen that one before now these ships they have two drones i think or actually this one has four and we just used one so we might be able to research all of these things right away let's uh click on razam 3 again for the other one Let's see what we find this time. Anomaly. Anomaly. Sorry. Mutated flora. Not sure what it does. Um, plus two happiness and plus two food production. That's interesting. An example of biodiversity gone berserk. This planet shows a variety of plant mutations of every size, shape, color, scent, flavor, and psychoactive effect that could that one could imagine. Some of the more noticeable results include rich food supplies and ecstatic gourmet chefs. Really? <laughs> and we found smart survivors. Gain XP per loss command points will be divided between surviving ships. Use it if you think you will suffer heavy losses in order to level up the survivors. Ah, oh, okay. That's cool. Now we can explore the last one as well, which is an atmospheric curiosity. Let's see what it does. 
right? Successful? Nothing much, but we did get 25 influence, which, um, yeah, we can use to, uh, basically, uh, become friendly with people. Anyway, then we have Kalem. Let's see what plans we have here. We have Kalem 1, a large Mediterranean colonizable planet. It produces a little bit of food and industry, as well as a little bit of gold. Alright, large snow. Yeah, this could be interesting for later. Now, this could be a decent colonizable planet, though. But, and also we get Jadonix. What is that? Plus four industry per population on planets. Ooh, this could be good. This could be very good, because this is what you use to get to the next tier of civilization. These luxury deposits, or luxury resources. And getting a plus four percent or a plus four industry per population on the planet, that is very powerful. I think I like that quite a lot, actually. However, since we are not an exploration ship, we um, actually cannot ex or we cannot see what these curiosities are, basically. Now the question is, what do we want to settle first? This is a tiny planet, which means it will not house as many populations. However, it does give us access to Jadonix straight away and also a little bit of extra science. I think that would be fine. Let's uh, colonize this planet right away. There we go. A tiny tundra planet. This is so cool. And every planet type has its own little cutscene. You know, like the presentation and the music in this game is so, so good. And this is a problem I've had with other four... 4x space games you know i played a little bit of stellaris as well and for some reason those games feel too sterile to me you know i find it very hard to immerse myself in them anyway let's see this guy should have yeah it has a little bit of um oh it doesn't have any movement points left sorry but i think we're going to be exploring in this direction i think we have another system over here that then connects back to Kalem. because i'm kind of interested in seeing what these anomalies are Right, it's a kind of magic. Congratulations, your empire through innocent or underhand means has acquired some luxury resources. Yeah, because we colonized the planet. Jadonix, you can use it to upgrade the systems in the economy screen. Right. Let's send this guy on his way. Let's see if we can make it to the other planet straight away. We can't, but we found an asteroid field. Interesting. Let's see, it has some effects as well. We cannot colonize it. But um, what does it do? Plus 50 industry on a system. That is cool. And it means it needs to be in the influence zone. Now this is not something you can... Yeah, you can see it in this planet. With Shaddai, the orange circle surrounding it, this is our zone of influence. Kalem is still an outpost and not a colony. But once it's a colony, it will also start influencing uh, the area around it. And once we reach this thing with, with our zone of influence, now we can get that benefit. However, theater effects for space battles are plus 25% extra experience on a fleet, but minus 50% accuracy on long range. Ooh, all right. That's quite interesting, isn't it? Let's click on it as well to see what it is. All right, yeah, that it's, looks okay, I guess. <laughs> all right, that's about everything we can do, so let's end the turn. Send this guy on his way again. Now, basically, once these guys reach a system, they will always settle in at the top left. And from there, we can research things. But I think we're going to send him on his way to Kalem. And then we can go down a little bit as well. Right, and there's probably another planet system, or, yeah, system over there as well. But we'll see. Alright, a solo quest has been started. Chapter 1, A Survey of Horatios. Alright, I'm not entirely sure if all of you guys want me to read this stuff, because it is quite interesting for these quests. But let's see, I will do it for now, and if you don't like it, you can tell me in the comments below. <laughs> the three of us stood around that table, a spectacle for all her ratio to consume. Gorgeous, brilliant, and indistinguishable. The guards in attendance had one question only. Who was the original? I claim to be, of course. Every bit as beautiful and as smart as either of the other two. That had to be the case, for we were the most perfect copies. Biological, psychological, de developmental. 
that the most advanced cloning science of the galaxy could make. No scientific test existed that could tell us apart. Each one of the three of us a microcosm of Horatio perfection. Yet only one was the real Horatio. Horatio Prime. I wondered what parents had brought that Horatio up, had developed that magnificent brain into what it was. And I wondered how Horatio managed to imprint that upbringing as if it was a technical issue like replicating DNA. Can a thing from a test tube have daddy issues? <laughs> hmm. Interesting question. We aligned ourselves with each other, Five and I, determined to avoid the fate of one, two and three. They had died in the lab once Horatio Prime realized what we were thinking. Suddenly we knew who was who, and he gave me his support when I claimed to be Horatio the original, Horatio Prime the Light. And so I was crowned Emperor, the gorgeous leader of a gorgeous empire, and Prime was put in chains. <laughs> But I know Five as well as he knows me, or Horatio himself. The minute he is out of my sight he will scheme against me, as I of course will scheme against him. And also as Horatio will scheme against both of us. Clones. They're so predictable. Alright, so... We need to choose an objective. And... Let's see. We could multiply. Increasing the Horatio population to 12 will satisfy this objective, and as a reward we would have a crafted nutrition plant, which gives plus 4 food production on original empire population. Alright. So I guess it would only produce food for Horatios and not for anybody else, if I understand it correctly, because it's tailored to an individual specific DNA sequence. Oh yeah, they're only useful for her ratio. Oh, okay. Then we have Luxury, a cultural apogee center. Plus two influence on original empire population. As her ratio, all her ratio are convinced that their level of intelligence, sophistication and culture is the greatest in the galaxy. They have planned a center to prove it. Here, her ratio talents in the arts and social sciences are collected, perfected, packaged and broadcast to the rest of the galaxy. Ah, okay. And then we have power. Build at least 5 ships of at least 59 defensive power. And it will give us an art artisanal excellence museum. Plus for industry. Actually, I think we are going to want to go for crafted nutrition plants because, like I said, once we splice DNA from other um, civilizations, Horatios are going to eat more food. So a way to have another building that produces more food I think is very useful. Let's start to multi multiply Multiplication quest, <laughs> I suppose. All right, and we also finished the drone network. The next thing we want is a cerebral reality upgrade. It will provide plus 15 science and plus 15 dust production. Right now we're only having plus 16, so that will basically double our income. Another three turns. All right, let's send our fleet over to Kalem. And now that he has arrived, we can start researching things. And we will start with this one, because this is the planet that we actually uh, colonized. So let's see what other benefits we can possibly get from it. Hyperium! Resource deposit, and we get plus 5 Hyperium loot. That is awesome! Well done. Through fair or foul means, your empire has acquired some strategic resources. Right. Six different types of strategic resources exist in the galaxy. They can be used to help build more sophisticated improvements or ship modules once the necessary research has been performed in the technology tree. When revealed, strategic resources are automatically exploited from your planets provided the requisite technologies have been researched. Uh, for this, it has not been researched. We need plasma metallurgy. Right, that is cool. Let's also check out the other planets. I think this will be our second colony. Plus 25% Empire Science production, alright, cool. Let's check out the other one. Jadonix, another one. Awesome. That is cool. Let's check out this one. Deserted Cities Anomaly. Plus 2 Science, plus 2 Industry and plus 1 Dust per anomaly, or per population, sorry, and plus 10 experience on ships, on our current uh, ship, basically. This is cool. That is really cool. 
Right, so we're getting a little bit of this. Later on we should have titanium as well. This turn, however, we cannot do anything else anymore. So, let's end it. Just completed. Sino Linguistics. Alright, and let's also start researching Plasma. So we can get the uh, Hyperion. I think that will be fine. And also, now that we're here again, let's uh, research this last thing. Jetonics again! Nice! Alright, so this is going to be a very important constellation to keep a hold of. However, if we zoom in, zoom in once more, we need to take another look at Kalem too, because our outpost takes 31 more turns before it's completed. However, we can speed this up through various means. We could spend, um, we could absorb, let's see, 10 food each turn from opponents' outposts, but there are no enemy outposts on the star system, so that is not going to be working for us. We also have a freehold fanfare, which uses influence. Well, we would need 75, and we only have 60 right now. It, it, its effect would be 100% food sent to the outpost. We could also spend dust, and I think this is the more likely one. It has the same effect, it just uses a different resource. But I'm going to do this, because once we click it, it basically has the turn, or the amount of turns we need for, for the colony to take hold. Alright. Now then. Let's check out the next constellation. Let's see what's down here. Wasat. That is a lot of planets. Also, technology stage unlocked in economy and trade quadrants. Builder of Wonders. Be the first to have three unique star system improvements in your empire. Hmm. Alright. Interesting. Not sure what we can do about that. Well, let's have a look at Wasat. What do we get? A large gas hot planet. A lot of production, lots of science. Um, science, a little bit of uh, dust, etc, etc. This goes by quite fast. <laughs> and what's that? Five, let's see. A lot of curiosities here. Not a lot of food, however. Like the huge tundra planet could be okay. But yeah. Anyway, let's go another turn. This episode is going to be very slow because there's a lot to explain and a lot to look at. The next episode should be a little bit faster, however. Anyway, we have arrived in Wasat and we can now research some of these anomalies. So, I think Wasat 2 would be the first one to be colonized. Let's send some drones over here. Technology. Record replay units. A module. Let's see. Influence per destroyed command points. Can only be installed on ships. Interesting. Wow, did that take up all the drones? Apparently it did. Alright, let's end the turn. Let's check out the second curiosity. Blue cap mold. Plus one dust production, plus one food, and plus one happiness. Alright, that seems cool. Alright, Deed, Seeker of Truths completed. Be the first to successfully search 10 curiosities. Oh, that is cool. Congratulations, you have achieved this legendary deed. Other empires can no longer hope to obtain it. And we got 75 Hyperium. That is a lot. Look at that. That is a whole lot. Your empire now has access to blue cap molds. Alright. Let's see, is there anything else we can research right now? No, we cannot. However, our hero has leveled up as well. Alright, let's assign a skill point. Our first one. So we get a radius over here as well. I'm not going to look at everything over here because I already know this stuff. But I would like this guy to be focused on empire development. And we have, let's see, overseer specific skills. Uh, all heroes can get access to this stuff. And then we have Horatio specific skills. Alright, let's have a look. Plus 5 happiness and plus 5% food on the system. That could be good later on. Papers, please. Plus 20% refill rate on fleets. Alright. Um, plus 10 food per fertile on system. Ooh. I like that one. Let's uh, go ahead and take it. Because it will help with growth as well. Alright. He also has a small ship that we could check out. Look at this. And this is something that is cool in this game as well. Because 
Once we go back, you can see it has various slots, and these slots can be filled with various upgrades. Now he has some weapons. He has one weapon, basic high one slugs. <laughs> it's a decent bow. We have other weapons available to us as well. We have basic high one slugs, which is already installed. We have a basic opal laser, which is very strong at medium range. This thing is very effective at short range but average at medium. This thing will be average at short. So maybe something that would... Oh, basic plasma beam. Optimal at all ranges. I think this would be an excellent upgrade. Let's go ahead and take that. It would, up, it would take 55 dust, however, for that to be installed. But it would be useful, except this guy is not going to see any combat for now. So we're going to take that out and we're going to close this. I just wanted to show it to you guys. Alright, Shaddai has finished making uh, the other stuff, the other improvements. Now we could do some other stuff as well. We could make Sino Industrial Infrastructure, which is plus 10 industry per fertile planet, plus 10 per planet, and plus 10 per temperate planet. And we are on a Mediterranean, so and we are also hot. So basically, um, this would only give us plus 10 on our current planet, on this one. That could still be okay, but not quite as imp as useful as it would in other um, on other systems. However, it's only for upkeep, and it's going to help us out in the long run. We could also go for a revealer, a second one, or a beautifier, and I think actually a beautifier could be very nice, so we can colonize another star system. Wasat might be an interesting one to colonize. All right. That's everything we can do this turn. I'm going to go up until turn 10. Because, well... <laughs> yeah. We've been playing for quite some time already. Alright, we got Shattered Crust. Plus 2 dust production, but minus 1 production and minus 2 happiness. Ooh, not great. And then the fewer the proud. Get a fleet damage boost each time an, an allied ship is destroyed. Use it if you think you will suffer heavy losses or if you have plenty of ships. Huh. Right, and then, man, we have to spend a lot of turns researching this stuff, don't we? Yeah. Alright, let's research this thing. Blue cap mold, alright. And yeah, this is turn 10, so actually I'm going to uh, put a cut in here. So please leave a like and a comment below if you enjoyed this content and wish to see more. And I'll see you guys with a video I do next.